Welcome to hands-on tutorial on TFIDF. TFIDF stands for Term Frequency, Inverse Document Frequency. It's a classic technique used in text analysis and search engines. Let's break it down. Term Frequency, or TF, measures how often a word appears in a document. More frequent words get higher scores. But some words, like the, or, and, appear in almost every document. These are not useful for finding relevant content. That's where Inverse Document Frequency, or IDF, comes in. IDF reduces the score of common words across all documents. It gives higher weight to rare words that appear in fewer documents. Now, multiply TF by IDF. This gives you the TF-IDF score. It tells you how important a word is to a specific document, in a larger set of documents. Search engines use TF-IDF to rank pages. It helps highlight terms that best match a search query. It's simple, fast, and surprisingly effective. That's TFIDF, a smart way to score text relevance. Let's look at a quick example. We have three short documents. Doc 1 has the text, the cat sat on the mat. Doc 2 has the text, the dog sat on the mat. Doc 3 has the text, the cat chased the mouse. Now let's focus on the word, cat. First, we count how often, cat, appears in each document. It appears once in Doc 1, zero times in Doc 2, and once in Doc 3. That gives us the term frequency. Next, we calculate how rare cat is across all documents. It appears in two out of three documents. So its inverse document frequency is lower, it's not super rare. Now, we multiply TF by IDF. That gives us the TF-IDF score. The word cat has a decent score in docs 1 and 3, but zero in doc 2. This shows that cat is important in those documents, and not at all in the second one. This is how TF-IDF helps us find what's truly relevant in a collection of text. With this brief introduction, let's dive into the hands-on section. In this hands-on exercise, we'll build a simple search engine for customer product reviews. Instead of using complex deep learning models, we'll stick to a classic technique, TFIDF, term frequency inverse document frequency. To keep things scalable and cloud-native, we'll use Apache Spark on Amazon EMR, specifically through EMR Studio, which provides a user-friendly notebook environment for working with Spark. Go to Amazon EMR homepage. Let's first get a high-level overview of the EMR homepage. At the center of the screen, we see the main description of Amazon EMR, a cloud-based big data platform that helps you run and scale open-source analytics frameworks like Apache Spark, Hive, and Presto. It's designed for processing massive datasets with ease. Now let's look at the Explore Amazon EMR Now section on the right. Here, you can choose how you want to run EMR. Amazon EMR on EC2 lets you manage clusters using EC2 instances for full control and flexibility. Amazon EMR Studio provides a managed Jupyter-based interface for data scientists to collaborate and run notebooks directly on EMR clusters. Amazon EMR Serverless is ideal for running jobs without having to manage infrastructure, just submit your jobs and let AWS handle the rest. Amazon EMR on EKS integrates EMR with Amazon's Kubernetes service, giving you the power of Spark on a containerized platform. Clicking Create Cluster here will guide you through setting up your preferred environment. On the left sidebar, we see organized access to different EMR components. EMR Serverless for managing serverless jobs. EMR on EC2 for managing traditional clusters, notebooks, events, and security settings. EMR on EKS for running Spark on Kubernetes and EMR Studio, where you can access getting started guides, manage studios, and launch notebooks. There's also a toggle at the bottom for compact mode, which condenses the navigation panel for a cleaner view. Now let's start with hands-on section. Avoid using the root account. Some features of EMR Studio may not function properly under root. Use an IAM user with sufficient permissions. Navigate to EMR then EMR Studio. Create a studio. You have three choices. Interactive workloads, this is ideal for data scientists and analysts who want to work with notebooks and run ad hoc queries. It's perfect for collaborative analysis and development. Batch jobs, choose this if you're planning to run scheduled or large-scale batch processing jobs that don't require interactive input. Custom, use this if you have a specific configuration in mind. It allows for more advanced control over how the studio is set up. In this demo, we're selecting interactive workloads to support data exploration using tools like Jupyter Notebooks. Choose the interactive workload option which is default settings. Rename the studio to something meaningful. Let AWS automatically create the S3 bucket and service role. Name the workspace. Let's understand the structure of Amazon EMR Studio. 
At the top, we have the studio. This is the main environment, typically shared by a team or department, like a data science group. A single studio can contain one or more workspaces and acts as a central collaboration hub. Inside the studio, each user works in their own workspace. Think of a workspace like a Jupyter Lab session, dedicated to one user or one project. Workspaces can run using EMR serverless applications or attached to existing EMR clusters. You can manage access using IAM roles. This lets you control which users or groups can access which studios or workspaces. Collaboration happens within the studio, but IAM controls who can view or edit specific environments. Here's the best practice. One team should use one studio. That studio can host multiple workspaces, one per user or project. Users typically work in their own space, but collaboration is possible if permissions allow. Let's look at an example. Say we have a studio named Marketing Data Studio. Inside, Analyst A uses a workspace called Sales Insight Pipeline. Data Scientist B uses another called Customer Review Analysis. Both workspaces live in the same studio and can share datasets and collaborate when needed. Launch the studio. Once created, launch the workspace. This will open a new browser tab with the EMR Notebook interface. In your EMR Studio Notebook, click Upload Files. Upload your notebook. In S3, upload your dataset. Let me upload the product review CSV file. This file contains 100 product reviews. It has header columns, ID, product name, timestamp, and review text. We will use this file for TFIDF tutorial. We will see how the term battery is ranked in various product reviews based on TFIDF. I have already created bucket for this. Next we need to add permission for Amazon EMR Studio runtime role so that the PySpark code can access the file on S3. Let me add this permission to Amazon EMR Studio runtime role. Now that we've granted the EMR Studio Runtime role permission to access the S3 bucket containing the product underscore reviews.csv file, let's go back to the PySpark code in the uploaded notebook. This notebook is attached to a serverless interactive app session. Let me add PySpark kernel to this notebook. Now let's do a quick code walkthrough. First, we import the essential PySpark libraries. We bring in Spark session to manage our Spark application, along with tools like Tokenizer, Hashing TF, and IDF from the machine learning library to transform our text data into numerical vectors. We also import functions for column manipulation and formatting. Finally, we initialize our Spark session with an application name. This session is the entry point for running Spark jobs on EMR Studio, setting up the environment so that we can process and analyze our product review data efficiently. Now, let's load our product review dataset from Amazon S3. We provide the S3 path to the CSV file and set header equals true to read the column names correctly. Then, show function to display the first five rows and preview the data. Let me show you product review CSV file that I uploaded earlier to S3 bucket for this tutorial. This CSV file contains 100 product reviews, each with four columns. ID, product underscore name, timestamp, and review underscore text. The reviews focus on a variety of tech accessories like earbuds, chargers, and battery packs. Many of the reviews include terms related to battery, making this dataset ideal for TFIDF-based keyword search. We'll use this file to demonstrate how to tokenize the reviews, compute TFIDF scores, and identify the most relevant product reviews for the search term battery. Next, we clean the data by removing any rows where the review text is missing. We use a filter to keep only the non-null review entries. Finally, we print the number of rows remaining after cleaning. Now we tokenize the reviews. This means we split each review into individual words. We use PySpark's tokenizer to create a new column called words. Then, we display the tokenized output to confirm it worked correctly. Next, we apply hashing TF to convert words into numerical features. Each word is hashed to a fixed-length vector of size 10,000. 
This creates a raw features column, which represents term frequencies. We then display the ID, tokenized words, and their corresponding feature vectors. Now we apply the IDF transformation to compute the final TF-IDF scores. First, we create an IDF estimator using IDF, input call equals raw features, output call equals features. This tells Spark to take the raw term frequencies and convert them into TF-IDF scores. Next, we train the IDF model using fit, featureized underscore data. Spark scans the entire dataset to compute document frequency. That's how many documents each word appears in. Common words like the will get a low score, but rare and meaningful words like battery or wireless will get higher scores. Then, we apply the trained model using transform, featureized underscore data. This creates a new column called features that holds the final TFIDF vectors. Each value in the vector is a weighted score, term frequency multiplied by inverse document frequency. Finally, we display the result with select ID, comma, features. Show, truncate equals false. This shows each document's ID alongside its full TFIDF feature vector, giving us a detailed view of term importance in every review. Let's simulate a search for the word battery using TFIDF scores. First, we define our search term. Then, we use hashing TF to get the exact index for that word in the feature vector. Next, we create a UDF to extract the TFIDF score for battery from each review. We apply this UDF and store the result in a new column called score. Finally, we display the product reviews sorted by the relevance of the term battery, showing each score with 20 digits of precision. Let's clean up to avoid unnecessary charges. First, delete the workspace. Then delete the studio. That's it. In this hands-on tutorial, we built a TFIDF-based search engine for product reviews. We cleaned and processed real-world text data, used Apache Spark on EMR serverless and ran everything within an interactive EMR Studio notebook. This is a practical and scalable approach to text relevance, delivering meaningful search results without the complexity of neural networks or tools like Elasticsearch.